Peace, Peace Rescue here. As always, Canadian real estate market update with particular focus on Vancouver. If you can't sort of value or entertainment out of these videos, all I ask you to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, I got a great video this week. I'm going to touch on the Bank of Canada, the rate hike implications, the mortgage side, uh, what's happening in the new development construction industry, particularly in Canada's two largest markets, which is a major uh, economic driver. We're going to get into all of that, but I think we have to kind of frame up this week's video with the Bank of Canada, of course, uh, hiking interest rates this week, another 50 basis points. That was actually below market expectations. The market was pricing in, expecting a 75 basis point move. So this actually kind of rattled markets and, and on the news, bond yields uh, collapsed, actually dropping the most they have uh, basically in a decade. So huge movement in the bond market and actually um, uh, futures markets repricing where they feel the Bank of Canada is going to land. So the overnight interest, the overnight target rate, uh, they had pre going into the meeting, uh, the market thought that rates were going to peak out this cycle at four and a half. Uh, they now have dropped to 4.25. So the markets are now starting to reprice expectations from the Bank of Canada after what was really, uh, it, was, it was a dovish press conference. I, I did watch it. Uh, again, I wouldn't come out and say that this is like a pivot. I mean, we have to put in context, 50 basis points is still an oversized rate hike. But when you go against markets, I think this is a forward indicator that central banks, the Bank of Canada anyways, is signaling to the market uh, that they're starting to weigh the, the pros and cons of, of tightening and, and potentially over tightening versus under tightening. So what is interesting, if you actually read the monetary policy report, again, all public information, if you actually watched the interview, um, they have flagged financial stability concerns. They have not flagged those in a very, very long time. Uh, so they have flagged financial stability concerns as really one of the main reasons why they didn't hike the 75 and why they're now pondering. So let's actually clip in right now to Carolyn Rogers' comments on financial stability. Hi, uh, I'd just uh, like to ask about uh, the extent to which financial stability concerns or concerns about financial market liquidity had some bearing on your decision to opt for 50 basis points today or whether it might have some implications for your approach to QT. Thank you. I, I'm going to uh, ask Senior Deputy Governor to take this question. Yeah, we've seen uh, financial conditions tighten significantly in recent months as central banks have raised rates to respond to inflation. Uh, government bond yields have gone up. Risk price, uh, prices on risk assets, equities, and others have have repriced down. These uh, these sort of sudden and sharp moves um, have led to, uh, in some cases, have led to some uh, signs of financial stress. Um, what we saw in the UK over recent weeks was fairly unique to some conditions there, but these are the kinds of things we're watching. Um, certainly tighten financial conditions and, and, and higher interest rates are, are occurring against a backdrop of some of the vulnerabilities that, that we and other central banks have talked about for some time now, higher levels of indebtedness, some structural changes in liquidity. So, so certainly the conditions are there. Uh, we need to be vigilant ab about um, uh, bouts of, of financial stress. Uh, now is certainly the time to, to, to be vigilant, both central banks and market participants. Uh, it's something that we, that, that we watch. Um, there's a, a section in the NPR that outlines our, our current thinking on it. Look, this is something that we've been talking about on the show for, for a while now, which is at the end of the day, rate hikes take at least on average about 12 months to filter through into the real economy. Uh, some economists say sometimes it takes even longer than that. The fact of the matter is that we've basically gone from zero, zero, you know, 0.25 to start the year to now we're sitting at 3.75. We've jacked rates 350 basis points on a highly levered, uh, you know, country, not just housing sector, but private corporations. And of course, the government, which has loaded up on debt uh, over the last number of years. So um, this is going to take time to filter through. And all we have to do is like, let's look at some real life examples of, you know, to the typical household, right? If you have 
Uh, if you had a $500,000 variable rate mortgage at the beginning of the year, so in February of 2022, you had a $500,000 variable rate mortgage, assuming a 30-year amortization, your payment in February was $1,700 a month. Uh, you know, rates were really low. That was great. Your, your payment was $1,700 a month. Fast forward to today, in, in November of 2022, your payment will be $2,700 a month. So that's a $1,000 move on your monthly mortgage payment if you floated it on a variable rate mortgage. Now, that's with a $500,000 mortgage. And like in the grand scheme of things, if we really back this out, that's really not a large mortgage when you consider where house values are today. So the, the, the national house price index for all of Canada sits just shy of, of 800,000, so about 780,000 roughly. Uh, so if you assume, you know, let's say you take on, uh, you put down 20%, you take on 80% loan to value, you're looking at about, on average, you'd be looking at about a $600,000 mortgage there. So a $500,000 mortgage is, I would say, relatively conservative in given where national house prices are. So how many households um, are, are willingly prepared and are able to service an extra thousand dollars per month? Now, again, if you go into some of these more highly levered housing markets, Vancouver, Toronto, it might not be uncommon for a family to have a million dollar mortgage because a typical detached single family house is at least, you know, one, five, one, six, one point seven million dollars. So imagine if you floated that your payment is now up north of $2,000 a month. So again, maybe you can get away with it. You can pay it for a little while, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to cut spending somewhere. You're going to start cutting spending in the real economy, right? You're going to buy some cheaper options at the grocery store. You're going to you know, buy a few less clothes. Um, so these are things that people will slowly cut and that will filter through into the real economy. And you know, just again, just to unpack things, I'm not trying to sort of, you know, sit here and promote the housing market, but let's understand like the risk and, and, and the realities of this, which is look what's happening in the new construction housing market. So we always talk about, you know, Canadians, basically that the whole uh, economic plan in Canada is basically mass immigration, let's all build people houses. And that's basically what runs the economy. So we basically recruit people from all over the world and we build houses and try to house them all. Um, that's essentially what the Canadian economy is built on, right or wrong, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, it is, it is the reality. Um, and so we have to do, all we have to do is look at, let's look at the construction industry uh, which is responsible for a lot of the economic uh, GDP growth that we've had in the country. Uh, so in September, in the GTA, in the greater Toronto area, you had uh, a decline of 96% in single-family detached homes. New single-family detached houses uh, dropping 96% on a year-over-year -year basis. Condo sales down 89% on a year-over-year -year basis. Um, so a huge decline there. But, uh, you know, just for context, uh, you know, the GTA is a metro region of 6 million people. This is for my good friend, Ben Rabideau. The GTA area is, is 6 million people in there. There was 45, 45 new single-family detached sales in the entire month of September. You think the developers are having a good time right now? Uh, and I know nobody's going to have sympathy for them, but let's be honest. Um, the, you know, the, the amount of projects that are going to get paused and the amount of layoffs, I think, that are coming in the construction sector is really no laughing matter. Um, in fact, if you look at this, uh, if we just get a normal rebalancing uh, to the long-term average in the construction sector as a percentage of the total labor force. So what that's basically saying is if we see a, a, a little bit of a layoff uh, and we see the long-term average of people employed in the construction sector, that would result in an increase. We'd lose uh, about 2% of the country's uh, total employment would be lost, jobs lost. So you can imagine obviously what that would do to your unemployment rate. So 2% all jobs in the country uh, just by construction jobs going back to their long-term average. Uh, and this is not just a GTA phenomenon. Uh, there are 1,500 
uh, just over 1,500 pre-sale unit sales in uh, greater Vancouver area in the third quarter. It's not just one month, but in Q3, there was just over 1,500 sales. Uh, that was down 72, 72% on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, the, the lowest recording for that quarter since 2012, and 2012 was a, was a bear market in housing. So you've got the two largest major metros uh, in the country have really seen collapsing volumes in the new construction space. So, um, like I said, the anecdotally, you know, we see it in the data, but anecdotally, uh, we are now seeing it. Um, we're seeing larger developers hit pause. These guys have the ability; they will sit on projects for a very, very long time. They've got deep deep pockets. But where you're going to start to see the real pain is some of these smaller developers, smaller builders that rely on uh, outside private capital. So they'll raise money from retail clients, um, you know, fa family office. It's, it's smaller money. Everybody kind of pools their money into a project. Or if you're more highly levered, you, you know, you've borrowed against one of these these uh, mortgage investment corps, et cetera, et cetera. You're, you, you are going to be in tough and we are going to see uh, quite a few insolvencies in that space uh now yeah and to sort of look at the bigger picture so we've got that you know you got bank of canada raising rates uh the debt servicing is becoming unmanageable for households uh because of that you've got declining uh weak home sales very little weak demand in the new construction space so a huge economic drivers basically has been turned off um and so as a result of that you will see uh, I think layoffs in that construction space that will take time to filter through into the rest of the real economy. Uh, so these are all things and it's no coincidence that, you know, the, the business consumer index, the confidence index in the fire sector, the finance, insurance, real estate sector uh, is at its lowest levels since the early days of the pandemic. So confidence levels in that sector, rightfully so, are scraping the bottom of the barrel. Um, so that's everything that's happening. Now, what is interesting is that when we look at the bigger picture and we kind of zoom out and say, oh man, that's a lot of bad news that's, uh, that's happening, but nah, who cares? It's just, you know, who, who cares about the, uh, you know, the developers, they've had it pretty good over the last five, 10 years, those realtors, those mortgage brokers, who really cares? Well, guess what? Uh, 10%, 10% <laughs> of the municipal budget, uh, municipal, municipal revenues in the GTA are on property transfer taxes. Hello, property transfer taxes. So it collapsed, you know, 20 year lows in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, GTA housing market and the resale market and, you know, 45 single family, new single family home sales uh, is not going to look very good for municipal budgets. And this is, you can start you can start running the same numbers for at the provincial level and at the federal level. Uh, it, 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 we're all we're all in this together, whether you like it or not. Uh, and so when we see the Bank of Canada sort of flag financial stability concerns, it really it doesn't really surprise us. It's just surprising that it actually took as long as it did. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at this week. Um, Look, quick little preview, which we'll get into next week. Uh, so we're looking at the resale market as well. Some early numbers out of greater Vancouver here where I'm working. Uh, residential resale sales um, are poised to come in at their, at their lowest levels since October of 2008. You'll remember that in September of 08, Lehman went down. So October 2008, we're running um, the lowest level since October 2008. You'll see those hit the media headlines uh, later next week, but you got the early insight right here. So uh, as always, hope that helped. See you next week.